Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. This is a question from January 2020. This is question number 10. I'm actually re recording this question. Um, I actually already did this some years back. Um, however, um, um, some students have pointed out that the voice is lagging quite badly in the, that particular video. Um, some of the older videos are like that because of um, at that time I didn't really have a powerful enough uh, machine a computer and um, a lot of times the the voice would lag okay so i'm going to re-record this question because i think it's lagging pretty badly here quite uh, you know you know the, the the words are not matching the pictures and they're quite a lot off so that's why i decided to re-record this video so it's more understandable um so going straight ahead with this question here is about a curve C, which is given an equation, y equals 4x cubed minus 9x plus k over x, where x is greater than 0, and k is a constant. The point P, which has x coordinate of half, lies on the curve C. Given that P is a stationary point of C, show that k equals minus 3 over 2. Okay, so now, a stationary point, the key words here is the stationary point. Okay, a stationary point is a point of zero gradient. Okay, this is a point of zero gradient. That's what stationary point means. It could, it could be a turning point, could be a maximum, could be a minimum, could be a point of inflection. The point is, it's the gradient of the curve at the stationary point is always zero. And the gradient of a function is given by dy dx, which is what you get when you differentiate the function. So we have y equals 4x cubed, minus 9x. Now, k over x can be rewritten as k times x to the power of minus 1 to get it ready for differentiation. To, to prepare something for differentiation, you have to write the x terms in the numerator. And we know that 1 over x is the same as x to the power of minus 1. So k over x is like k times 1 over x. So it's like k times x to the power of minus 1. Okay, so that's important for us to understand the rules of indices for us to be able to differentiate and manipulate these expressions. Now we've got it ready for us to differentiate. We will differentiate this expression um, or this equation by differentiating both sides with respect to x. So this side becomes dy dx. This becomes, now when you differentiate something with respect to x, it's an x term, you multiply by the power. So it becomes 3 times 4, which is 12. And you take 1 from the power, so that becomes a 2. And here you have minus 9x. So basically what effectively ha happens here is you drop the x because you multiply by the power, which is 1. So it's 1 times 9. And you take 1 from the power, it becomes x to the power of 0, which is 1. So you end up with minus 9. And here, again, you multiply by the power. So it's minus k times x. And you subtract 1 from the power, it becomes a negative 2. So this is what dy dx is. And we know that at when x equals 0, when x equals a half, we know that dy dx is equal to 0. So if I replace the x in the gradient function with a half, then this gradient function should be equal to 0, because when x equals a half, the gradient is equal to 0. So you have 12 times. Uh, what I'm actually going to do here is um, I'm going to rewrite this a little bit first. So let me rewrite this as 12x squared minus 9 minus k over x squared. Just rewrite this in index form. Again, this, this is like the reciprocal. So this is like k times x to the power of minus 2, which is k times 1 over x squared, which is k over x squared. It's k over 1 times 1 over x squared, k over x squared. So I'm going to now um, replace the x with a half. So 12 times a half squared minus 9 minus k over, and this is a half squared and we know that that's equal to zero when we, when we replace the x with a half in the graded function you're going to get zero so this is 12 times um, a quarter so it's 12 times a quarter minus 9 minus and this is k over a quarter now k divided by 1 over 4 i'll write it in, in its full term that's going to give you 4k because when you divide by a fraction you're multiplying by its reciprocal so k divided by a quarter is the same as k times 4. So this is going to give you the 4 cancels with the 12, give you 3, so you're left with 3 minus 9 minus 4k equals 0. So we can have 3 minus 9, which is minus 6, is equal to 4k. 
So we can say k is therefore equal to minus 6 over 4. So we can say k is equal to negative 2 thirds. k is equal to sorry, negative 3 over 2. Negative 3 over 2. Divide both of them by 2. And hopefully that's what we had to show. Yes, we did. It says show that k equals negative 3 over 2. And we've shown that k equals negative 3 over 2. So that's part A done. Okay, so we know the stationary point is when the gradient is 0. We differentiate the function in terms of um, the k there. And we replace the x with uh, a half. Because when x equals a half, the gradient is 0. And when you solve the subsequent equation, you end up with k equals minus 3 over 2. Then it says, determine the nature of the stationary point at P, justifying your answer. Okay, now if you want to find the nature of the stationary point, you've got to find the second differential, which is d squared y dx squared. Okay, we've got to find what that is. So before we can do that, of course, we need, we need to know. We, we just write the equation for... Um, let's write the whole equation now. We know what k is, so we can say y is equal to... Um, we've got 4x cubed minus uh, 9x, 4x cubed minus 9x, and then we've got plus k over x, so it's minus 3 over 2x, you can say, right? k over x, 3 over 2, um, yeah, okay, so that's 3 over 2x, that's y. And dy dx, as we determined earlier, is 12x squared minus 9 12x squared minus 9, and then we have minus k over, so you've got minus, minus k, so it's plus, plus 3 over 2, whoops, what happened there? That's a bit weird. Okay, so that's plus 3 over 2x squared. Okay, that's what that is, because when we replace this with um, this, the k with 3 over 2 is going to be minus, minus gives you plus. You have 3 over 2x squared, okay? So that's dy dx. Now, to find the nature of the stationary point, we need to know how the gradient is changing. When it says determine the nature of the stationary point, they're basically asking, is it a maximum or a minimum, basically? That's what they're asking. Is it a maximum, which looks like this, or is it a minimum, which looks like that? Is it, great? Is it a turning point where the gradient becomes zero at the highest point or the lowest point? Okay, so is it a maximum or is it a minimum? That's what they're asking for. All right, so now, how do we determine it, whether it's a maximum or minimum? Well, we find what's called a second differential. We find d squared y dx squared. So let's first write this in a way that's friendly. 12x squared minus 9 plus 3 over 2 times x to the power of minus 2. Friendly to differentiate. I've got to find the second differential, which is d squared y over dx squared. Okay, now some of you will ask why is there the 2 here and the 2 there? In different places well because when we differentiate something with respect to x we differentiate it's like we're finding differentiating this thing with respect to x now we're differentiating dy dx with respect to x so it's d squared y over dx squared okay so that's a little side point don't really have to know that um, and secondly why do we find the second differential because when you differentiate something you're finding its rate of change like dy dx is like the change of y over the change of x so if we have a, a graph that looks like this, okay, and we are finding the gradient of the gradient function, we're finding how the gradient is changing. If it's a maximum, the gradient is going from positive to less positive to zero to negative. The gradient is decreasing the whole time. So at a maximum, the rate of change of the gradient is less than zero. It's a negative value. But when you have a minimum, the gradient starts off as negative, it gets less negative, becomes zero, and it becomes positive and more positive. So when you have a minimum, the second differential is greater than zero because the gradient is increasing the whole time. The gradient is going from negative to positive. All right. So when you have a, a minimum point, the second differential is always going to give you a positive value for that. So that's when you have a minimum. Okay, and when you have a maximum point, the second differential will always give you a value which is negative. Okay, because the gradient is going from positive to negative. It's decreasing as you go along. Okay, so if I find the second differential for this, it's going to give me 24x. The constant term will become 0. I'll have minus 2, so times 3 over 2, which gives you minus 3, because the 2s will cancel. x to the power of negative 3. So that's 24x minus 3 over x cubed. 
So we know that when x equals a half, was it a half? Yes, when x equals a half, okay, at p, we can so at p, x equals a half. So we're going to say that the second differential, therefore, dx squared is going to be 24 times a half minus 3 over a half cubed. Okay, so that's going to give you 12 minus, and that's 3 divided by 1 eighth, which is 3 times 8, which is 12 minus 24, which is going to be negative 12. Okay, so we can say that as as the second differential, the squared y, dx squared, is less than 0. Therefore, at p, we have a um, maximum. It's a maximum because the second differential is negative. All right, the second differential is negative. The gradient at that point is going from positive to negative. It's decreasing as we're going along. So when the second differential is less than 0, we have a maximum. If it was greater than 0, we have a minimum. Okay, so this is a way to understand why that is the case. If you don't understand, it's not a big deal. If you, just, if you know that the, whenever the second differential, the value of x you put in there for that, that turning point gives you a, a negative value, you have a maximum. It gives you a positive value, you have a minimum. That's fine. Okay, so you're justifying your answer. All right, justifying your answer is, so you've mentioned that it's a, a maximum and this is the justification. The second differential is less than zero at p. Okay, so there's the answer to part b of question number 10 and now we're going to go on to part c all right so part c says a curve the curve has a second stationary point using algebra find the x coordinate of this second stationary point so now we have a second stationary point so i'm going to take this equation here that we found for dy dx okay which is this equation right here okay i'm going to copy this equation and paste it over here second doesn't want to move okay it's moved now all right so we know that at the stationary point the 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 gradient is equal to zero okay so dy dx is equal to zero so we got 12x squared minus 9 plus 3 over 2x squared is equal to 0. Okay, so we got to solve this equation. Now, to solve this equation, I need to get rid of this uh, denominator. So what I'm going to do is I'll multiply both sides by 2x squared to get rid of the denominator. That's going to give me 24x to the power of 4 minus 9 times 2x squared, which is 18. 9 times 2 is 18, so that's 18x squared plus 3 equals 0. Now we have what's called a disguised quadratic. This is called a disguised quadratic. Why? Because you have a, a term which is the square of another term inside this. Yeah, so like I can say, for example, let the letter B be equal to x squared. So I can say that this is minus 18B. And that means B squared would be x to the power of 4. So this is like 24B squared. And I've got plus 3 equals 0. So this is like a, a disguised quadratic, as I mentioned. And we can see that there's a common factor of 3 in each of these terms. So if I replace, uh, if I divide both sides by 3 to get rid of the common factor of 3, that gives me 8b squared minus 6b plus 1 equals 0, which makes it easier for us to try to factorize this. So now we're going to factorize and solve for the, this for b. Okay, so when I factorize this, this is going to be 8b squared, and this is going to be plus 1. Two numbers multiplied to give me plus 8b squared. And when I add them, I get negative 6b. Okay, the product is 8b squared. The sum is negative 6b. They both must be negative, and it must, of course, be 4b and 2b. When you multiply them, you get 8b squared. When you add them, you get negative 6b. So the common factor from these two terms here is 2b. 2b times 4b is 4b squared. 2b times minus 1 is minus 2b. And 4b times minus 1 is minus 4b. So you end up with 2b minus 1 and 4b minus 1 equals 0. So you end up with 2b equals 1, uh, 4b equals 1. So b is equal to a half and b is equal to a quarter. Okay, um, so now we can say that 
um, x squared is equal to a half or x squared is equal to a quarter. All right, so that means x is equal to plus or minus the square root of a half or x is equal to plus or minus the square root of a quarter. Now, right in the beginning of the question, something very important that we should note. It says x is greater than zero. Okay, so we're, when we have an answer like this, we know that we have to exclude the the, positive, the negative value. So we say as x is greater than zero, say x is equal to one over root two, and x is equal to a half. Now we know this solution already. This is already, this is the point P. So this is the other point. Okay, so when the other point is when x equals one over root two, which we're going to write as root two over two. So x equals root two over two. This is the x coordinate of the other stationary point. So this is the x coordinate of the other stationary point. Does it give you a, a letter? No. So this is the x coordinate of the second stationary point. And they didn't tell us to find the nature of this or anything. They just told us to find its value. They didn't tell us to find the y coordinate either. They just want the x coordinate. So that answers this question um, and completes this question here. So I hope that was clear. Um, the um, other questions on this paper, the January 2020 paper, are found in the playlist that will appear in this region over here. Other questions from this topic of uh, basically differentiation from P2 and uh, you know stationary points, you can find in the play in the playlist that will appear over here. Applications of differentiation. You will also find. Um, a video up here which will te teach you how to sh use my channel to find other content that might be um, useful for you in an easy way and you can subscribe to the channel by clicking on this link thank you for watching and see you soon